So Whitlands is about an hour's drive from Wangaratta, about 45-50 minutes drive from Benalla and 35 minutes drive from Mansfield. And Whitlands is an interesting geographic area. So the Whitlands locality is 12 kilometers, that's a plateau. And, um, and we have quite defined areas that the people who've lived here a long time tell us. So it starts at the rock cutting and finishes at the par lines. <laughs> I think initially people are attracted to Whitlands for its natural beauty, because we get great views out across the mountains. But I think in time, people come to realise that Whitlands is it's much more than just a place that looks nice. It's, it's a community where there's a community spirit. Um, you know, everyone looks out for each other. We don't always necessarily live in each other's pockets or even see each other that often. But, you know, if something needs doing, then, you know, we're there for people. If we need something welded, we'll go up and see David. You know, if we need a nurse, we'll go and see Jill or Christine. Um, you know, if we need a tree cut off the road, we'll go and get my dad and his chainsaw. So, you know, we've got enough diversity in our group too that we can all look out for each other. For me, it's a pretty special place. Well, this afternoon, we gathered here today at Jill and Michael Kemp's place for our monthly Whitlands Progress Association uh, get-together. It's almost a century old, this group, but it's just been reactivated recently. And we come together once a month there's only 33 permanent residents at Whitland, so we're quite a small group. People from nurses to engineers to viticulturalists like me to farmers. Um, you know, we've got quite a diverse group. We've got lawyers, we've got all sorts of people, winemakers. <laughs> of those 33 residents, they run 10 businesses, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. And it's quite interesting that people have been able to create and thrive with businesses at Whitlands because uh, we're part of that 7% of Australia that's never going to get the national broadband network. So we get our internet access via satellite. So it's a, it's a challenge that you sort of need to factor into doing business up here. Uh, we've been in business here for a bit over 20 years now. It's an engineering business. We build equipment for the firewood industry. And we've been making our Super X, which is our main wood splitter, since 1994. And since then, we've probably made almost 3,000 of them. Uh, we also build firewood processors. We sell them probably 8 or 10 or 15 a year uh, to Australia and quite a few to New Zealand as well. You know, as far as business goes, uh, the number one people in Australia for, um, for building that sort of stuff. And uh, people are always surprised when they come to my business, which is uh, up you know, in an isolated spot up in the back of a farm, a single phase power, that what you can do when, um, when uh, you're faced with you know, having to do that sort of stuff. Whitlands' history is quite young compared to our surrounding valleys. It's, it didn't start really until the 1880s, so it was almost 100 years after the first fleet arrived that people actually started to settle on Whitlands. And it was, uh, it was through government initiatives that they um, put the land up for selection. And those early selectors, they really had a hard time. They had no roads, no infrastructure whatsoever. And so they, they didn't sort of last that long. It was probably 20, 25 years and the place became quite, quite deserted again after that. It wasn't, until, it wasn't until the 1920s that a new wave of settlement come through and that was really um, people that didn't really choose to come to Whitlands, they came here in desperation. We had the Great Depression, we had failed um, British migration schemes um, and so people came to Whitlands as a last resort and I think what they, they didn't bargain on was actually falling in love with the place. It, it had an English climate so it reminded them of home and uh, yeah, so they 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 worked as a community and the, the community spirit grew to to build infrastructure so the post office came along and the school came along and it was not through the government there was no government support whatsoever it was all all done by the locals um, you know there was one car on wetlands so if someone got sick you know Mac Enders he would be called upon you know drive us into Wangaratta you know we're sick so you know and that's that's how it was back in those days and I think even though times have changed we still have an essence of that up here, um, you know, through geography, I think, but also just through our community spirit.
we moved here in 1932, uh, <coughs> two families of us, eight in total, in total, and we moved into a two-room bark hut <laughs> in the bush about three miles or so further up. And, um, you know, earth floor and no lining and, uh, of course, no school, no power, no telephone, <laughs> no neighbours, <laughs> but as kids, of course, we enjoyed it. It was two and a half years before we got a school going. My father, who uh, had done a bit of building in his time, he donated the timber for the school to be built. And uh, an old chap here who used to own this place, actually, um, he donated the iron for the roof. And uh, it was built by working bees. And once the building was up, then the education department supplied a teacher. <laughs> I was born on Whitlands in 1935 and um, from there on there was sort of a real pioneer's existence. Um, my father along with neighbours Wally Unsworth, Andrew Skirving, Mac Enders and Arthur Hardy and Danny Jones who owned this place um, worked together on a sawmill who cut the timber and built the school and built our houses and that's where it all started. Once they got that done, they started cl clearing the scrub, growing potatoes, milk and cows. And uh, as Dad used to say, he worked like hell in the summer and the spring, fed the cows so they didn't die in the winter. So he never made much, so yeah, so that was the existence. But through all the hard times, we mightn't have had, mightn't have had shoes on our feet or the backside in our pants, but we never went hungry. That was great. I've had a very, very interesting life. I reckon I've seen virtually the birth of electricity and what it could do for us. And this area up here now was mainly cleared. Well, it was, in those days, it was potatoes and cabbages and so forth to feed the family. They brought a picture show to Whitfield, <coughs> Shirley Temple, <laughs> animal crackers in my soup, and uh, we walked to Whitfield and back again, 12 miles to see that show, and that was the first time I'd ever seen electricity. <laughs> Lands is a very beautiful place in terms of its atmosphere. It's a really peaceful place and lots of people who come to visit us and stay with us comment on that. There's something about it that makes you feel like you've gone away from the world and can be at one with being here in this place. And so I think some of the things that, that are really important in terms of the future is how this community that's quite a remote community and isolated in a sense because of its geography, it continues to support each other and, and move into the future. So one of the, I suppose, tests that we had was the fact that in 2000, December 2006 and January 2007, uh, a lot of Whitlands uh, was affected by bushfire and just about everybody had fire on their property. And in a sense, it's really interesting for me that people sort of moved on from that and they don't reflect on that. It's something that's happened. People pulled together at that time and they moved on. And I think it sort of um, talks a lot about the spirit of resilience in this community.